Extra waves are a brand new challenge added to Splatoon 3 Salmon Run Next Wave where we can face a King Salmon with our fellow co-workers and a challenging wave along with it for special rewards such as bronze, silver and gold shells that we can spend on luxurious rewards from special banners to unique suits specifically for Salmon Run. The problem is getting these rewards is pretty challenging as you have to beat the King Salmonid to increase your chances for better rewards and the extra wave has proven to be quite an obstacle for most parties, whether it's with friends or on a freelance duty. So in this video I'll share everything I've learned on how you can beat Kohazuna and win a lot more than lose in your future attempts too. In the previous video of mine talking about skill rewards from extra wave I made an error with hazard levels and ranks and the chance to get skills in Apprentice were incorrect and I would like to take this time to correct the mistake. It's unfortunately much lower and lowering your rank to apprentice is not a good plan. I personally find professional plus to a good balance between difficulty and chance to get rare skills, but it should be up to everyone to decide how you try your luck. Now let's get started. First of all, I think it's important to know that if you're playing in freelance with random players, not every extra wave can be done as Salmon Run is heavily dependent on good teamwork but there are multiple techniques that can make it significantly easier and that's what we are trying to achieve here. There are multiple aspects of this wave where I think things go wrong and it's best if we discuss them in sections, which I have separated into three, weapons and their roles, the egg launcher and movement. So let's start with weapons. Each rotation in Salmon Run is different and some are better than others, but one thing that is consistent is that they are not completely random and there is a logic that these rotations are put together in ways that weapons have roles they are supposed to perform, from crowd controlling against hordes, long range boss platters or good painting weapons. Another role that I think we should declare are damage dealers, or as I like to call them the King Salmonid's platters. These are the weapons that have the highest DPS in the rotation or in general for Salmon Run and should be used exclusively to fire at the King Salmonid. Now immediately some of you will say that that's a waste of time and that's something I'd like to change everyone's mind on if you want to succeed in Extra Wave. I've seen many forums and comments all around during Extra Wave, everyone should be focusing on clearing bosses and not firing at Kohazuna as the egg launchers are the main damage dealers against the King Salmonid and everything else is a waste of time. That's not exactly true. Generally speaking during Extra Wave you're able to fight most bosses but even in executive VP I've often got in the situation that we either run out of bosses or we just don't have enough time or space to deal with the most annoying ones as it would take longer to take them down than it is worth. I'll touch this topic again in the next section but a boss drops you 3 golden eggs you can use to damage but it takes roughly 2 seconds to throw those eggs and they really don't require that much time and dedication from the whole team just to run after eggs. Instead, what I recommend during Extra Wave is to split your team, know your weapon's role, and if you have a weapon that deals really high damage, then spend 90% of your wave times just shooting at the King Salmonid and spend a 10% rest to help your team with certain bosses or to stay alive and let the rest of your team who have less powerful weapons deal with the crowd and use the eggs. To understand why I suggest this, let's take a look at an example I prepared with a rotation that has the E litter in it. The E-Leader is one of the more powerful weapons you can get in Salmon Run and as you can see in this footage it deals a considerable damage of around 600 with a single fully charged shot on this Kohozuna that's very visible on its health bar. In comparison I can't tell the exact number but judging from the difference in damage on the health bar I would place the damage of the Egg Launcher somewhere around 700, so a little bit more than the E-Leader. So if instead of running around the map aimlessly shooting at Kohawks and Chums or trying to shoot down fish sticks with the E-Leader and waste time running after eggs, you can instead spend all that time during the wave shooting at Kohazuna and deal almost as much damage every second or so as a golden egg consistently, and that's the key word, consistently dealing damage without any downtime. This can be done every single rotation with at least one of the weapons, from the 52 gel to the dynamo roller to the hydra splatling and so on. Which is why I always recommend testing your weapons at the testing range first to determine which ones are the best suited for this role. Now this doesn't mean you should never throw eggs. Sure if there's one laying around use it, but it's almost always better to leave it to your co-workers to use them unless there is no time left to use them all. While at least one player is dealing with a King Salmonid you still have the three other co-workers who can deal with the horde, collect eggs, but I would still very much recommend them to keep shooting at Kohazuna as the damage adds up significantly. So my first tip and the conclusion of the weapons part is to make sure if you have a strong gun that you spend the majority of your time on shooting at Kohazuna to increase your chances at victory significantly. And I do mean this is probably the most important and most helpful part of having more Kohazuna splats under your belt. 
Now, the obvious counter argument here would be that while you're shooting at Kohazuna, your team can very easily get overwhelmed, which is a perfect entry into our next section of the video, the egg launcher. The second most important aspect of being successful in Extra Wave is the proper utilization of the special egg launcher. Everyone knows you can use the egg launcher to deal damage to the King Salmonid, and now we have an idea that it probably deals roughly 700 damage. Each boss you splat will yield 3 golden eggs you can use, which is around 2100 damage you can throw at the King. But that's not the most efficient way to use them. Still a lot of players don't know that the egg launcher can also be used to deal damage to anything else during the wave, including other bosses, and the good news is that 700 damage is enough to one-hit almost every boss with a few exceptions. Knowing this, what I recommend to do is always throw two of the eggs at the King Salmonid and use the third egg as a reserve in case of a more tiresome boss spawning that you need to splat fast and one-hit them with the egg launcher. This way, the argument that one person only shooting at the King Salmonid is detrimental to the team is pretty much pointless as now we know everyone has access to a weapon that can easily one-shot most of the bosses, clear some space, or deal 700 damage to anything they like. At the same time, your team is now also capable of turning one golden egg into three by using it to splat another boss. The egg launcher also has similar tricks such as specials like the crab tank for example that if you hit let's say a fly fish at the middle with an egg, you can destroy both their launchers at the same time, making it way easier to handle them. I've seen it countless amount of times that all eggs are wasted by throwing them against Kohozuna, while there are still 4 or 5 other salmonid bosses around that could have easily turned those 3 eggs into 9 or more. But instead, the run failed because we were overrun. So the conclusion of the second tip is to learn to utilize your egg launchers and if you know your weapon isn't capable of dealing really high burst damage that's close to 700 or so, then focus more on eggs and make sure you keep throwing those eggs also against other bosses and even the Horde to multiply them and give more space and resource to your whole team. And the third section that also seems to be a problem in most extra waves is movement. Have you ever had an extra wave where you finally managed to splat these 3 or 4 salmonid bosses? You have more than 10 eggs laying around only to turn around and see that Kohazuna is on the other end of the stage and all those eggs are now useless? Yep, we were all there once and that is why movement is also an essential technique to learn for King Salmonids. It isn't known as far as I know who the King Salmonid focuses on, but most of the time I think the player who deals the most damage to them and is also somewhat close, so it's probably a bit of both. We only have Kohazuna right now and he has two types of attacks, the belly attack and his giant leap attack. If the player is close to them and in front of Kohazuna, he will mostly only use his belly attack, which is incredibly easy to dodge and barely uses any space at all, allowing everyone to keep attacking him without any issue. On the other hand, if the person is far away, he will jump into the air and spend a significant time out of range of everyone before landing. Not to mention taking up a lot of space underneath that becomes extremely dangerous, overall reducing the time you can spend at damaging, so what we need to achieve is to make him spend more time doing belly attacks and less time jumping. In case you find yourself the target of Kohazuna, it is your responsibility not only to try to stay alive, but you also have to be aware of your surroundings and your teammates and make sure you're keeping the King Salmonid in range of everyone, while also trying your best to keep him from jumping all over the place. Properly moving the boss is extremely important, as not only there are areas that you can trap yourself very easily, but as I mentioned, if you run away from your team, no one can deal damage, and if Kohozuna is jumping all around the place, everyone is in more danger and no one can deal more damage, losing valuable time and thus rewards. With all three options now discussed, we have three different methods that all directly increase the amount of damage that is dealt to the King Salmonid during Extra Wave, and if they are done properly, they should exponentially increase your chances at succeeding. So now let's summarize everything together that I said. Make sure you check every weapon during rotations to know which weapons have the best DPS, and if you get them during Extra Wave, spend the majority of your time shooting at King Salmonids, or at least always stay in shooting range so you can turn back immediately after you help splatting a Salmonid boss. This will ensure constant DPS similar to throwing eggs. The rest of the team, or if you don't have a very good DPS weapon, should focus on splatting lesser salmonids and easier bosses and learn to utilize your egg launcher properly to use those easy to obtain gold eggs and launch them against tougher bosses to multiply one egg into three, and only then throw them against Kohazuna. Remember that throwing eggs barely takes time so you have more than enough time to clear hordes first, and if you can, try to use your gun at the King Salmonid whenever possible. Lastly, if you are the target of the King Salmonid, make sure to look around and plan your movement properly. Look where the majority of the Salmonid bosses are coming from and make sure you keep the boss close so that your team is always in shooting range or egg launcher range 
and your team is not losing out on time to damage. At the same time, also try to keep a healthy distance to not overwhelm your team and learn to kite Kohazuna with only belly attacks. With these three tips, your chances of beating Extra Wave should be significantly better now, especially with practice and more experienced players. But I really do hope this video will help you all have more fun in Salmon Run and in general, the new content. There are of course several other little tricks and tips that you can do, and if you have any, please share them with the others in the comment section. But if you also have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask them, and I will try to answer. But I'm also sure there are other community members who would love to help. Thank you very much for watching and all the support, and consider checking the rest of the channel for more Splatoon and Salmon Run content. See you the next time.